Hello and welcome to this video on the DPW Design MOG 4-band distortion. Let's check out what's to come before we get into it. Now I'd like to say right up front, thank you to DPW Design for sponsoring the creation of this demo video. To quote DPW, the 4-band distortion is a preamp overdrive and distortion Euro rack module with manual or CV controlled on and off. Each frequency band has its own gain, so we have our Euro rack in, gain and volume, but then low, low mid, high mid and high distortion levels, hence the 4-band, the multi-band distortion. We've also got a high Z input, which takes guitar or bass really well, also takes dynamic mics or line level very well. We can use the Yoro rack in and high Z in together. And there's also a unique evaluation circuit around switching this on and off, either manually or with CV or gate. You just have to cross a one volt threshold there to actually turn the unit on or off. And although I definitely indulged in pushing this thing into some really filthy distortion, it does a lot more than that too. One final note is that the actual high Z input behaves itself like a tube amp. So even when this is off, we can bring signals up to Yoro rack levels and get this nice kind of squashy tube like compression when you really dig into say a guitar, you can feel that responsiveness under your fingers. There's a timing index on screen and that works as linkable timestamps in the video description as well. So without further ado, skip around as you see fit. But let's dive in. So here I'm using the distortion like a wave shaper right at the front of the patch. Here's that wavetable oscillator. But as we can isolate and kill these bands, there's a huge range of kind of tonal shaping that I really like up at the kind of oscillator section at the first sound stage in a patch. Nice round, warm, low end. All that bite from the low mids. All nasal like structures from the high mids. And just those kind of higher structures, higher harmonic kind of rasps and gritty bits on the high. So even with minimal drive, but then varying the drive. It's easy to get a really nice, interesting wave shape. Right off the oscillator, and then patch this through the rest of your patch. So here's using the 4-band distortion to switch in overdriven accents, but only on certain steps. My gate pattern that is what I'm considering my accent is this green trace here on data going to the on and off. Now this is against a kick and an offbeat hi-hat, nice and simple. And the way I'd set this up is setting a sound with a switch on. Say that's the amount of distortion that I want. And then switching off and controlling the level which could actually mute out on these accent steps if you wanted with the volume down. Pretty kind of funky as it does that actually, as opposed to those nice driven ones. So here I'm using the four band distortion to just warm up, reshape the mids and kind of shift the higher frequency content in this crusty old sample. Now if I take the distortion off, 
This is the top end. The higher noise profile is A, quieter, but B, much higher frequency. We lose that very kind of top end noise and it kind of shifts a little bit lower down the spectrum where it's been emphasized in the distortion circuit. So I'm aiming just to warm this up, it's a little bit louder, so I'll turn the volume down. Just a tiny bit of drive, really just kind of off. From the bottom there, pushing the top end, emphasizing the noise. Here's a super quick example with a 909 bass drum. Here it is with the module off and on. Now in this patch, I wanted to explore parallel distortion, inverting the distortion against the dry sound and using a generated signal compared with the dry and the wet. This A larger than B output here on the AV1 from DPW to control the switching on and off. Now my input here is a nice clean sign. This sign is coming out. Luckily we can take this in and out without affecting the sum. And then I'm using this to mix the clean sign through the distortion and back in again. So as I turn up channel B, and then turn up its volume, we have a blend of my sine wave input and the distortion, so a nice parallel blend. And other than maybe a level booster here, we could say this is a 50-50 like blend. Now before doing anything else, we could simply invert the distortion's output. Slightly different sound. could turn it on and off with this signal or it could turn it on and off with itself. It's like just some interesting glitch effects. So you can hear a whole world of tones well beyond the sine wave input. Let's check this out in a wider patch with lots of modulation, some low pass gate style action and some effects. So here I'm using the four band distortion in a feedback path. And there's some interesting sounds to be had just creating our own feedback path that sounds different to my delay effect. However, turn on the distortion, shape it thinking of this like an EQ, and we're instantly in a really cool tape-like kind of character. That kind of rolling lower mid-tone. saturated feedback, that building, like I said, tape-like tone. Let's maybe take all the lows out, really kind of crank the high. Get my drive. So here's a beat where I'm using a CV signal to turn the gate on and off. It's that sequence at the top of data there. And you can hear it's adding this kind of like baseline quality as it kind of saturates that low end and gives a kind of more pitched note-like sustained vibe to the beat. So here's my guitar straight in and this a Fender Telecaster playing the neck pickup for anyone that's curious. And when this is actually off, there's still a nice kind of sound to it and it kind of feels a bit pokey and responsive under my fingers. People that play acoustic instruments may know what I mean by that. The response of this, you can feel just a bit of something there, a light compression as it were. Let's try out a few chords first. Mm -hmm. 
and then turning this on there's a very light amount of drive and just a bit of reshaping a bit of scooping of those mids a bit more bottom and top on that multiband setting you can hear it's a much fuller tone Chord quickly with and without it on. Just a more rounded tone, but turning it off again, that kind of pokey response, if I play like a nice staccato, hard, dynamic kind of funk line, you would really hear this kind of compression and kind of snappy response of this input preamp stage. got that kind of snappy compressor clean amp kind of vibe to it so here's everything full on with lots of sustain it's still very dynamic listen to that higher note So here for some softer played guitar, the distortion's offering just the right amount of kind of shaping and kind of general soft responsive saturation. Nice EQ shaping before going into a really noisy effects chain. So here's a patch where I'm driving a spring reverb tank from these DPW modules. Now my dry sound first splits into the AV1. So I can control just the dry and wet level there. But I'm also splitting it into the limit. And the limit here is the important part on the way into the spring reverb. It's multiple soft knees into that limiting stage. It's really rounding out what is quite a percussive sound, but we're not getting that horrible slappy clangorous kind of twang of a spring reverb that I personally find quite undesirable. Rounding out that input before coming into the spring really softens and gives this a much more lovely kind of roomy tone. The output of the spring comes directly into the high Z on the four band distortion where I can have a much duller, deeper response. And that sits quite separate from the dry sound, which can work really well in a mix. But of course... You may want something drier, brighter, a bit noisier from driving the higher harmonics there. So let's check out processing an Acid Lab Miami 808 clone straight into the high Z input. And let's check out some nice switching on and off for audio arrays. I'm going to lower the kick drum and use this like a fill. So I'm going to actually turn my kick off and switch this off at the same time. So this signal audio array turns the distortion on and off. Interesting, like, fizzy, weird ring mod. <laughs> it's nice as a fill. Again, if I do it without turning the kick off, it's a little bit too much for me. But I do like turning that bass drum down and turning this off. So here we'll explore feedback and my actual patch here is the output of the four band distortion into channel b here on this av1 that's serving as a mixer the sum output is coming back in to actually feed the input and then the actual output from b because we get a mixed out and separate outs is what's coming into the scope and then we're listening to it so if i turn itself up it's going to feed itself back on itself therefore creating a feedback loop some really cool lissadu curves and just all out noise
playing around with the gain and that multiband control. There's a whole range of sounds and there was some reverb in the background just for that little splash of space. But what gets really interesting is feedback being disrupted by something else. And that's why I'm using a mixer here, not only to create the feedback path, but to feed something else as well as itself into the distortion. Now if I come out of channel A directly and plug this sound in, it's a low pitch pinged filter, kind of like a soft bass drum sound. Now if I start feeding this back on itself again, I love that kind of weird tremolo of a brat or wobble that's just appeared. Feedback's always a weird, interesting thing to experiment with, so I was keen to get some in this video. With some careful knob turns there, there's definitely a lot of interesting feedback interactions to be had, and it's something I'll certainly be exploring more of. So here's a patch making use of both the hi z input, which in this case is the Maleco Mampha, and an additional oscillator from my Yoro system to the Yoro rack input as well. Both inputs are active all the time, and as they are here, can be mixed together. A patch from the Maleco Mampha coming into the hi z there. And on top of that, I have an oscillating filter randomly shifting through some chord intervals. And this distorts really well. The two sounds are very disconnected at present, but as soon as they're in the distortion, you can hear this real tension and kind of drive on certain pitches. It's just not there without this additional oscillator. Side chain, a kick drum. Super filth with an external input and a Yoro rack input mixed together. Because of the really fast evaluation circuit of input and switching input that aims to give glitch-free, click-free switching, when we do this at audio rate, we get some interesting effects. Now the manual states this may wait up to 50 milliseconds to find the right time to switch and be glitch-free. So when I turn the switch off and the switching is active, we can see we're not actually switching really anywhere near the rate that's coming in. If I turn this on and just leave it on, I'm simply shaping this triangle wave at the top, which is my input. The much faster sine wave is what's going into the switch. So we can say shape into a nice wave that we like. Switch off. And then use this faster mid trace to switch on and off at audio rates. because it's trying to evaluate and find a glitch-free way to turn on and off, which when you're actually gating this, accenting it, using say a foot pedal to switch this on and off, it's glitch-free and very fast and responsive. Audio rates, however, give us these interesting kind of steps. So let's just quickly play around. So in this patch I'm driving and shaping an already characterful feeding back reverb effect and it's led to this sound. It's this lovely kind of gritty haunting character. Here's the dry sound on its own. Sits really well with this noisy, grittier, more characterful background kind of reverb and the dry sound in the mix as well. So that's it for this video on the Mog 4 band distortion from DPW Design. Hit like, leave a comment, support my work on patreon.com forward slash divkid if you like what I do. There are some bonus exclusives over there, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for watching. Bye.